Okay, anyway, folks, another uh, short video from LearnToGoBoxGuitar.com um, about improvising and specifically how to phrase your riffs. Right? Now, a riff or a melody, yeah, we often just think about those in terms of the notes that you play, like whether they're high pitch or low pitch, and therefore the scale, if you like. Um, so, you know, you might be given a scale and said, well, you know, go off and improvise on that. But the important thing, really, is not the scale, or the notes that you pick, but where you choose to place them, the rhythm that you choose to give your melody, and that's what phrasing is. Right? Phrasing is the term that we use to describe the rhythm of melody. So that little groove that I just played there earlier, I just used notes from an open position, so just the one and the five, and then the notes in the third fret, third position, the flat three and the flat seven, that was all, just that. And then, so you got a very, very limited amount of notes, but an infinite sort of variety of uh, rhythmic ideas that you can put to those. So the trick is to come up with interesting ones. Right? Now, it's too much to think that you're just going to do that. That you're just going, oh, okay, I just need to think of interesting things to play and left, be left at that. That's, that's, don't expect that you're going to do that. Right? The key is always and always and always and always, as I always go on about, is in listening, right? So listen to your favourite players, the ones that you want to, the ones that you want to play like. Listen to drummers, listen to saxophone players, other, other players. Listen for the rhythm of their melodies, listen for their phrasing. Right? Exercises that you can do um, uh, sometimes simple, sometimes not so simple. Well, I'm just going to have a look at a few easy ones. There's plenty more in, in my blues pack particularly. Um, but let's have a quick look at some easy ones now. The main thing you want to do is be able to uh, identify your beat. Okay, now your beat just goes one, two, three, four, one. If you're playing four, four time, one, two, Three, and we usually are one, two, three, four. That's your beat. The beat stays with you all the time. The beat never changes. The beat stays there. The only time the beat will change is if it gets faster or slower. We usually don't want to do that, so the beat stays there. The rhythm happens in relation to that beat in the same way that a melody happens in relation to a key or a scale. All right. Don't worry about that. Have a think about it if you like. The main thing though is that your rhythm connects to that. Some of the notes you will play with my foot. Some of the notes you will not play. Some of the notes you will play when my foot isn't. Okay, they go in between when the foot taps down on the upbeat. They're the important ones. They're the funky syncopated ones. Right? So what we want to do as a little exercise is get ourselves playing uh, accents around the beat. Right? So when you're playing a particular groove that focuses on the second note of that bar, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It sounds like this. Yeah? So don't worry about the left hand stuff, but with your right hand, try and get this down two, three, four. Get that consistent. Get that grooving along, get that so that you can hear, oh yeah, that's a cool thing. What you do elsewhere is entirely up to you. You can leave a space, you can play little bits, you can play play nothing at all. Make sure you play the one on the bass so that we know where the one is. And hit that too real hard. So now what 
we've got is somewhere to start working from with your phrasing that's a little bit more interesting than just one, two, three, four. All right? And this is where the creative stuff comes in and where the listening comes in. But first, you just get that real simple thing down, right? One, two, three, one, two, and then see what you can come up with. And again, this is where your skills come in, right? If your right hand is not um, fluent, uh, now, not, to, not to say that you have to finger pick, you might be with a flat pick too, that, that's not the thing. It's more that your right hand skills are up to this, right? And the better your skills, the more interesting things you'll be able to play. Um, so don't worry about trying to copy what I'm doing, I'm just rolling, right? And I want you to roll, I don't want you to copy, I want you to roll with your thing, right? So the main thing that you've got to do is go one, two, hit the two. One, two, strum, strum, one, two, whatever you do. Okay, then, the next thing is I want you to start playing some notes just on this third fret to make up little riffs while this is going on. One, two. Don't feel that you have to do it on every bar, but once you've announced it, make it consistent. Right? Some of those I hit the one, some of them I hit an upbeat, stronger, but I always come back to that two, that second beat in the bar, right? So do that, experiment. You know, you're not gonna get it wrong. No one's gonna reach through the computer and you know, ring you by the neck and send you off to the principal's office. Play around, experiment. Uh, once you've done that, experiment with these upbeats, right? One, two. First of all, you'll need to perhaps count them. So to go a bit slower. Up, up, down, up, up. Okay, so your foot's tapping as you're doing this. Eventually though, you want to be able to hear the difference between a strong downbeat and a funky upbeat. So, the exercise then is to play two, three, four, one, two, once you've got that, try and find some syncopated beats after the two. One, two, three, and one, two. Yeah, that sort of thing. I'm going through this quickly because it's you know it's just a short YouTube video. Uh, there, which you may be watching on Facebook, <laughs> a short video out of context of a wider cause. Um, just to give you a few ideas, things to play with, right? Um, Really, if you want to delve into this more deeply, you know, you want to look at it in context, which is what my blues pack's for. Um, but have a play with this because, you know, it's, um, you'll be surprised how once you start to get these basic rhythmic skills down, you'll find that your melodies are so much more interesting because you're able to place the notes in more interesting places, right? You're not just going... Whatever you know, playing playing up and down a whatever scale that you that you choose to play on, uh, and you find yourself leaving leaving uh, gaps, you know, big spaces uh, for other people to play in, or just for, to create tension, whatever. Um, so 
um, have, a, have a go and a play with that too. Yeah? So the idea is to look at that um, hitting the one, uh, no, hitting the one with the thumb and then accenting the, the two strongly. Also looking at uh, some syncopation in there, some playing on some upbeats. Now, hitting the two is not your only option. There are other types of grooves, there are shuffles, there's bow diddly things. You can accent the one and do some funky things. You can accent the three and uh, you know, sort of drag it back like a shuffle. There's all, all sorts of different things you can do. Uh, but like we say, one thing at a time. And the two, the second bit of the bar tends to be pretty groovy. It's where the snare hits strongly. Um, and um, it'll, it'll give you something to, to play with and work on. Have fun with that one too.